Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Mark from Embedded Pro. It's week eight of my series investigating the ARM Cortex M33 core, and this week we continue the deep dive into the Trust Zone security extension. And this week I'm looking at how we set the security attributions for memory. After some theory, we'll look at how the trusted execution environment component is used in MCU Expresso. Let's start off with a bit of theory and some terminology. We learned last week that the processor state, secure or non-secure, was controlled by the memory access. We're aware of the regions non-secure, secure and non-secure callable. And we've used the words secure world, non-secure world and secure memory to refer to the trust zone projects. But these are not really a very good way to describe the memory and we need to be more specific. We should really be using the terms the security state for the M33 core and we should talk about memory security attributes. The attributes are the memory areas that define the security states. So how do we set the security attributes for memory in the trust zone architecture? We're looking deeply here into the Cortex M33 architecture. And the core is issuing memory requests down through the security attribution units onto the system bus. Every memory access, whether it's a read or write or executing a program instruction, is tested for its memory attributes. There are two logic blocks that test every single memory access for its security settings. These are on the left the implementation defined security attribution unit and on the right the security attribution unit. The security attribution unit is logic that comes from ARM and it works just like an MPU. There can be 0, 4 or 8 region descriptors. There are 8 on the LPC 55S69 and each region descriptor can be used to define the type memory attribution. And each region descriptor can set the security attributes for a memory range. The default is that a memory area is secure. The security attribution unit is comprised of a number of 32-bit wide registers. These are the SAU type register, which defines the number of regions that are implemented. It's a 3-bit region and can support up to 8 region descriptors. The security attribution unit region number register selects the region to be programmed. Again, it has a 3-bit field and can select one of 8 regions. The security attribution unit region base address register is one of eight registers that set the base address of a memory region where security attributes are set. And lastly, there are eight region limit address registers. And these registers set the top or the limit address of the region and also define the security attributes for that region. There are two bits, NSC bit, and that can mark the region as non-secure or non-secure callable. And lastly, in bit field zero, the enable bit is used to enable or disable a region. By combining these registers, we can set the security attributes for eight different memory regions. Turning to our Hello World Secure project, it programs a security attribution unit to set up three different regions. SAU region 0 is configured so that all addresses in the range 0 hex to 1FF, FF, FF are non-secure. This is done by setting the NSC bit in the RLAR register to be 0. Above this in blue we can see the non-secure callable region. This is region number 2. This has a very narrow address range, so memory in the range 10 million FE00 and 10 million FFFF are set to be non-secure callable. And again, this is done by setting the NSC bit in the RLAR register. Here we can see that it's set to binary 1. A further region, region number 1, is also set up to be non-secure. This is a very large address range, starting from 20 million hex, running right up to the top of memory. And again, because this region is non-secure, the NSC bit in the LAR register is set to be zero. One trick with the security attribution unit is that any memory area that's not defined defaults to be secure. We can see that in the green area in the diagram. 
Back now at the interface between the CPU and the system bus and looking at the security attribution logic. Running in parallel with the ARM security attribution unit is the implementation defined attribution unit and the interface to external logic. ARM recognized that 0, 4 or 8 region descriptors may not be sufficient so they provide a mechanism for semiconductor vendors to extend the attribution unit with a device attribution unit. The device attribution unit is a logic block outside the core that receives addresses from the core and passes back into the implementation defined attribution unit the security attributes for that address. So the implementation defined attribution unit comes from the chip vendor and just allows the chip vendor, NXP in this case, to increase the granularity in region sizes for security attributes. Now we remember from last time that the security attribute is defined by bit number 28. So if bit 28 is even, the memory region is known to be secure. And if address bit 28 is odd, then the memory region is secure. For example, we might want to set up a secure comms channel via a UART. In this case, we want the UART to be only accessible by the core in the secure state. In that case, we'll access the UART with bit 28 set high. But if we wanted to access the UART in a non-secure state, we'd access that same memory location, but with bit 28 low. And this is an example of memory aliasing going on inside the chip. By memory aliasing, it's the same UART, the same logic block, just being accessed either with bit 28 high, secure, or bit 28 low, non-secure. And then lastly, in the security attribution logic, there's an arbiter that's used to combine the logic from the security attribution unit and the implementation defined attribution unit. Note that in this logic, the only way to define a non-secure memory region is for both the SAU and the IDAU to set a non-secure region. We can see that with the two red blocks non-secure being added together to make a non-secure end result. One final thing to note in the SAU is that we set Set a bit NSC to define a non secure callable region. And we can see that this non secure callable region descriptor from the SAU must be combined with the IDAU in non secure configuration to make non secure callable region as the end result. This is all probably best explained by looking at an example. So let's move back into MCU Expresso IDE. We're now going to look and see how MCU Expresso IDE can help us set up the security attributions for the different memory regions. And we'll do this by selecting the Hello World Secure project and then opening the Trusted Execution Environment Configurator. So here we are in the TEE. Of course, all memory security attributions need to be done from the Secure project. This is quite a large window with a lot of information, so I'm going to make some space by pushing that out of the way. And we can see that in the implementation defined attribution unit, indeed memory from address zero up to address just below 30 million hex is all set to be non-secure. And then we see where bit 28 is set, the memory is secure. These are RAM aliases at 40 million, non-secure, these are the peripheral buses for all the peripherals. And then 50 million and above, the secure aliases for the peripherals. Well, we know that the security attribution unit set up three different regions in our project. And we can see some of them here. Let me take region one. This is an area of memory from address 10 million hex up to 10 million FE00. It's of size FE00. This is configured for secure code. And we can see this memory secure code down here defined. And we can see that the secure attribution unit is configured with attribution units to make it secure. The veneer table is placed in region 2. And that's defined with a base address of 10 million FE00 and a limit address, a top address, at 10 million FFFF. It's of size 200 hex. Attributes are set for this area to be non-secure callable. We see that here. The veneer table is in a memory region 
defined by the secure attribution unit to be non-secure callable. We can show the effect of the security attribution logic, which is combining the effects of the implementation defined attribution unit and the security attribution unit by merging the two units to see the logic output. So here we see that at the bottom of memory in flash, we have non-secure region. There's a flash alias region at address 10 million hex, which is secure. The non-secure callable region is above that at 10 million FE00, and this is where the veneer table is placed. And there's an alias RAM region, RAM0, which is secure starting at 30 million hex. Again, bit 28 is set there. And that's where the secure stack and secure data is placed. Well, just like any other MCU Expresso config tool, we can use this tool to update the code and write to a C source module called tzm underscore config dot C and tzm underscore config dot H to set the security attributes for our project. So one final thing to see by switching to the security access configuration tab. In our example project, printf is handled by the secure project. And so the secure project needs to have access to the flexcom0 UART. And we can see that flexcom0 has been configured for secure access in privileged mode. So now only secure code can access flexcom0. We haven't made any changes, but let me update the code. It tells me that it's going to update tzm config.c and tzm config.h, which is OK. And now we're returned into our project. Let's have a quick browse of the file that has been generated. Here it is in the secure project in the trust zone group, tzm config.c. Let me double click that to open it up. And in this source module, sets up the secure attribution unit for us. So we have a function board init trust zone, and here we can see the security attribution unit configuration. If we now look at line 146, this is security attribution unit region number two. And we remember that this is the region that sets up the non-secure callable region. And here in the region limit address register, we're setting the end of the memory region and also writing bit one into the NSC field. And this is how this particular memory region is configured for non-secure callable. Well, I hope you like this week's look at how we set memory security attributes for trust zone projects in MCU Expresso. Next week, I'm going to take a look at a real life trust zone example when we consider Heartbleed versus trust zone. Who wins? I publish these videos every week, so you can subscribe to my channel. You can like this video and you can share it with your friends. I'll see you next time when we look at Heartbleed versus trust zone. Goodbye.